So we've got, gone through two examples of creating a survivorship or, or life tables. What we're going to do now is create a survivorship curve. So I have a new, new tab worksheet that has my ages. And what I'm going to do is copy this survivorship information, these data, to this new worksheet. But I'm going to paste special. So I want to paste just the numbers or the values because I don't have the actual um, formulas on this table. So the way I did that was I right, I can right click it and then if you paste special uh, in Excel there is this values that you that you check and we'll do it again and I'll show you an alternative way. So that is our survivorship and this is dull sheep. I'm also going to do the same thing for flocks. So we have our flocks. This is our survivorship. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to paste special. Now with this paste special, I'm just going to hit paste special or other options because now it opens up this window. And I'm going to select the values and hit OK. So just again, I could go to here and do paste special. That opens up our window or I right click and just click right there with this paste special and select the values. Now you'll see that our that ages is, is much longer and that's okay because dull sheep live longer than fox. But what we're going to do is plot both survivorship curves on one graph so we could see if both of them exhibit the same type of survivorship curve. Now our survivorship curves are always on the log scale. So what we're going to have to do is create two columns where we're going to convert these values, these percentages, to a log scale. Now why do we have to do that? It's because if we don't, then our curves are all going to look very similar to each other. So what I'm going to do is label each of those, so doll and flux, and then I'm going to use my formula. So I want the log and in this case, I want log base 10. Um, it's not really going to matter, but if we do log base 10, then what I can do is do my LX. But first, I'm going to multiply by 1,000. So when I multiply by 1,000, uh, my scale starts at 3. So if I multiply this by 1,000, then this is 1,000, and that's 800, and 789, and 776, and so forth. It just makes things a little bit easier. Do we have to do that? No, we don't, and I'll show you why. I'm just going to use log base 10, and you'll see that everything becomes negative, but when we plot it, it just changes where our x-axis is. So because of that, convention is usually to go ahead and multiply our L sub x of by a thousand to get us out of our decimal zone and then we take the log and here I'm just gonna key it in as zero because the log of zero is undefined but that is the end of our table I'm gonna do the same thing here so we're gonna take the log to the base 10 and I'm going to multiply our survivorship by 1,000 so that I can avoid working with our decimals or values less than 1. And I will go all the way down until we get to 0. And then I will just key it in, that last one, as a 0. So I have all of my y's here, and I have age as my x's. So now I want to insert a figure. So what I'm going to do is highlight this, and using the control, I'm going to hold the control key, and then left click and select this column. So now I have two columns selected. And then I'm going to insert a figure. And the figure that I want is a two-dimensional line chart. And we'll fix these as soon as we can. So this clearly is not correct. So we're going to have to fix this. 
first we're going to right click and we are going to uh, edit our data so we're going to select data and that is clearly not what we want so we're going to remove that and now we have log lx and our horizontal category axis labels we need to edit those so our axis label la range is this i'm going to highlight all of those so now it reports zero one two three and that looks better it started at zero because that's our age and it goes all the way up to 14. next thing we want to do is to add our next one so our series name in this case this is, will be their flocks and our series value so i'll delete that and then I will move that out of the way and highlight this column. And then I will hit OK. And this one, I'm going to click back here and edit it. And I'm going to change that name to Dull Sheep. And hit OK. So now we have our dull sheet and flocks. It looks okay. I'm going to hit okay. I want to move this. I'm going to move this up out of the way because we still have to create our axis labels. So I will go up to format chart. I should say chart design and our axis titles, my primary horizontal axis title we will say age and we'll move it down a little bit I do want that enlarged a bit and then we will also add our axis title vertical and for this vertical we want survivorship but this is the log of survivorship which we could also use L, L sub X. And I will move that just slightly. And now we have our two survivorships and we can go further. We can edit this so I can um, format my data series. And I can change the color. So we'll do black for the dull sheep. That works. And then I click on our flocks and I also want black but this time I want dash type and I want to make that dashed and I think that looks okay so now we have a survivorship curve so what can we do with survivorship curves well if you think back to class we can make comparisons out of them so definitely the dull sheep that looks like a classic type 1 survivorship curve we have initial mortality rates early on in life and then after we get through that first year we have very high survival low mortality throughout most of their life until they hit their maximum lifespan and then mortality increases Fox also kind of looks like a type 1 survivorship curve uh, I wouldn't say this is more of a, a, a type 3 even though we have a large drop um, in our in our survivorship but we do have higher mortality rates early on, and then we have uh, pretty much high survival until we reach the end of our, our lifespan for those flocks. So both, both of them seem to be about a type 1 survivorship curves. What else do we see? Well, if we compare them, our mortality rates are going to be much higher for the flocks in this area. Mortality rates will be similar through the bulk of their life. And the other thing that we can see is that our lifespans are different. So no big surprise, we're dealing with a big mammal versus a small plant. So that's how we do a survivorship curve. This is how we add two to one graph. And I know there's some other ways, different keystrokes, but this is our goal. We, we need our survivorship to be on the log scale. It's usually easiest to multiply survivorship by a thousand and then take the log so that avoids our negative numbers and we always start our age at zero and when you get to the end where it's 
you know, undefined. I like to just put zero so that our survivorship curve all the way goes right down to zero. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions, please email me.